In this video, we're going to go over how to balance our redox reactions in acidic conditions. Now, we need to first understand and make note that redox reactions can be balanced in both acidic and basic conditions, and each of them will result in a different answer. So in this video specifically, we're going over balancing these reactions in acidic conditions, and that's very important to make note of. I'm going to quickly run through these six steps. And then after that, we'll go into detail about what happens in every single step. So first off, we're going to write out our half reactions. So this is the reaction we're looking at, and we're going to write out the half reactions. We're going to balance out all the atoms except for oxygen and hydrogen. Then we're going to balance out the oxygens by adding in water. We balance the hydrogens by adding H+. We balance the charge by adding electrons, and then we balance the electrons, and then we add and simplify the half reactions. Okay, so over here we can see our overall reaction, and we need to determine our half reaction according to step number one. Now, if we take a look at this overall reaction, it's pretty straightforward, and we can intuitively tell what our half reactions are going to be. Our first half reaction could be iron 2 plus to iron 3 plus, and then our second half reaction would be this chromium oxygen compound to chromium. But if you can't just intuitively tell what our half reactions are, or if you get a more complex problem and you can't instantly tell what the half reactions are just by looking at it, there's actually a way to determine uh, precisely what our half reactions are going to be. And that goes back to this expression, where we say Leo says Ger, in order to determine what's being oxidized, what's being reduced. Because if we can figure out what's being oxidized and what's being reduced, we can figure out our half reactions. Now, if we take a look <laughs> at this iron over here, we're going from iron 2 plus to iron 3 plus. So iron is becoming more positive. If we're becoming more positive, that means we're losing electrons. And if you're losing electrons, you're oxidizing. So it's Leo. You're losing electrons, you're oxidizing. So then we must automatically assume that this chromium compound must be reduced. But we have to make sure, okay? How can we make sure? First of all, we know that chromium, it's going to end up with a positive three charge. So that means what charge does chromium have to begin with? What's the oxidation state of chromium in the beginning? We can figure that out through a series of steps known as figuring out what our oxyg oxidation states are. Now, oxygen in this molecule, we know that oxygen has a oxidation state of negative two unless it is found in peroxides. In peroxides, it's gonna have a charge of negative one. But over here, it's not in a peroxide, so our oxygen is going to be negative 2 as always. But we have 7 oxygens. If we have 7 oxygens, we have to multiply this by 7, and we get negative 14. So the charge of all the oxygens is giving us negative 14. So, and we want our chromium and oxygen, the oxidation states of both oxygen and chromium, to overall give us this negative 2, give us the overall charge. So we're trying to get to negative 2. How do we get to negative 2? Well, we already know our oxygen is giving us negative 14, but what's our chromium going to give us? Our chromium is going to give us some value x, okay? But we have two chromiums, so that some value x has to have a 2 in front of it because we have two chromiums, and this expression over here represents chromium. Now all we'd have to do is solve for x. Now quickly, I want to make sure that you guys understand where this equation is coming from. We want to get to negative 2, right? This is our overall charge. We want to get to negative 2. What is negative 2 equal to? It's going to be equal to our charges of chromium and oxygen. Oxygen we determined to be negative 14 because we had the negative 2 from one oxygen, but we have 7 oxygens with negative 14. Then we have 2x. The x represents the unknown charge of chromium, and 2 represents that we have two chromiums. Now, if we solve for x, we're going to get x is equal to positive 6. That's the charge of chromium. So chromium, it's going to start off <laughs> with a positive 6 charge. Now, what does that mean? That means chromium, it started off more positive and it became less positive. If you're becoming less positive, what's happening? 
you're accepting electrons. If you're accepting electrons, you're gaining electrons, you gain electrons, you're reduced. So we've confirmed that the chromium, uh, the chromium oxygen compound over here is being reduced. So now we can write out our half reactions. We've confirmed what our half reactions are. Our half reactions are going to be the chromium compound producing chromium three plus, and this is being, this is our GER, so it's being reduced. And we have our iron two plus becoming more positive to iron three plus, and this is our LEO. It's becoming oxidized because it's losing electrons. Now I've written this out more clearly. So we've written out our half reactions. What's the next step? The next step is to balance everything except for oxygen and hydrogen. Okay, let's take a look at half reaction number one. We have chromium and we have oxygen, but we're not worried about the oxygen right now. We're just worried about the chromium. We've got two chromiums on this side. We have one chromium on the other side. So I'm just gonna add a two over here to balance the chromiums. Now we've got two chromiums on each side. Taking a look at our iron, we have one iron on this side, we have one iron on this side. This is already balanced and good to go. So I've written it out clearly once again. We just added a two to get two chromiums on each side. Now we're gonna add the water to balance the oxygen. So over here we can see we have seven oxygens. So that essentially means that we're gonna add, add seven H waters to balance out that oxygen. Why are we adding seven waters? Because for every one water, we have one oxygen. So in reality, we actually added seven oxygens to this side. Now we have seven oxygens on the right-hand side, seven oxygens on the left-hand side, and oxygens are now balanced and chromiums are balanced. Taking a look at our second half reaction, we have no oxygens, so we're not worried about adding in water. So over here, I've just written it out more clearly that we added seven H2O to get our seven oxygens on the right-hand side. Our next step is going to be adding in H plus to balance out hydrogens. Now on this side of the equation, we can see that we have 14 hydrogens because remember seven times two, that's 14 hydrogens. If we have 14 hydrogens on the right hand side, we need 14 hydrogens on the left hand side, so we're gonna add 14 H plus. So we added in 14 H plus. Now if we look over here at the second half reaction, we have no hydrogens, so we're not worried about adding in H plus. Next step is to add in electrons to balance the charge. Now this is very important. We have to have the same charge on both sides. So here we have this positive charge. But how much positive do we have? We have 14 positives. So we have positive 14. Over here on this molecule, we have a negative two charge. We only have one of this molecule. So we're gonna add in that negative two. Positive 14 and negative two, that gives us positive 12. So the charge on the left side, left hand side is positive 12. What about the right hand side? Well, on the right hand side, we have this chromium with a positive three charge, but we have two chromiums. So it's actually two times three, which is giving us a positive six charge. So we're positive 12 on this side, we're positive six on the other side. How can we balance out our charges? Well, to balance our charges, we must add electrons. We add electrons to the side that is more positive because remember, electrons are negative. So if I want to get the same charge on both sides, I'm going to add six electrons to my uh, left-hand side. If I add six electrons, electrons have a negative charge. So essentially I'm adding in negative six. Positive 12, negative six, that gives me positive six. Now we have positive six on both sides. So essentially I'm just gonna erase this we added in six electrons to this side to balance out our charges. Now let's take a look at our second half reaction with the iron. Here we have a positive two charge, here we have a positive three charge. We're gonna add electrons to the more positive side. 
they these two sides only differ by plus one so i only need to add one electron and i'm going to add it to this side because adding in one electron that's the equivalent of adding in negative one because electrons are negative positive three negative one gives me positive two now i have positive two on both sides so i'm just going to erase this and we have uh balanced our electrons now over here, we can actually see it more nicely written out that we've balanced out our electrons on both sides. But what we're going to do next is that we have to make sure that both of the half reactions have the same number of electrons. Here we can see in this half reaction we only have one electron. Here we have six electrons. We want the number of electrons to be the same in both half reactions so we can cancel them out. How can we get six electrons over here? Well, we can multiply this entire half reaction by six. And if we multiply it by 6, we're going to get 6 Fe2+, 6 Fe3+, and 6 electrons. Then we have 6 electrons in both half reaction, and we're good to go. And here we can see it more nicely written out. We multiplied this bottom half reaction by 6, and we got 6 electrons. And now what's going to happen is that when we add and simplify our half reactions together, so we're simply just going to add our half reactions together, the electrons we want them to cancel out and look at that perfect we had six electrons in each they cancelled out one thing i want you guys to make note of is that whenever you're cancelling something out when you're adding into adding two half reactions together and cancelling things whatever you cancel out has to be on opposite sides of the arrow take a look over here this uh, electron was on the there on the right hand side of the arrow these electrons are on the left hand side of the arrow so we have to have things on opposite sides of the arrows to cancel them out. If the six electrons were on this side, you could not cancel, uh, cancel the electrons out because they cannot be on the same side. So if we cancel out our electrons and then we simply add everything else together because we can't cancel anything else out, everything else, we don't have any similar, uh, sim similar species on each side. So we simply added everything together. We had 14H+, we brought down this chromium oxygen compound, the iron. We brought down the iron over here, the chromium, and the water. And this is our overall uh, balanced redox reaction in acidic conditions. That's the most important thing to remember over here. And it doesn't matter whether it's acidic conditions or basic conditions. We want those electrons to cancel out in the end just like this. Now to quickly again summarize what we did we wrote out our half reactions first thing to do write out your half reactions you can figure out your half reactions by leo says gur figure out what's being oxidized figure out what's being reduced most of the time you'll be able to see it intuitively after that balance all the atoms except for oxygen and hydrogen then add in your waters to balance oxygen add in your h plus to add and balance your hydrogens Balance your charge by adding in electrons. Remember, you add electrons to the more positive side. Then you're going to balance those electrons, meaning that both half reactions have to have the same number of electrons. Then you're going to add and simplify your half reactions together to get your overall balanced redox reaction in acidic conditions.